Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh Heron. Thanks for watching the Moto America YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Here we go, Medallion Superbike race number one. And we're away. It looked like Cameron Peterson in the middle of the 45 got a really good launch. So does his teammate Jake Gagne. Is Gagne's going to lead us into turn number one? And he's right there. Look at Heron going around the outside into third spot. What a start from the third row from the Ducati at Josh Heron. I had a good chat with him not uh, not long ago, Greg, so we'll get into that in a little while. But Heron rockets himself from the third row to third as they go up over the top of turn four for the first lap. He's got Escalante and Skultz right behind him. Great job by Richie Escalante on that Vision Wheel M4 X-Star Suzuki. I talked to Richie Escalante, and he's telling me that he's finally figured out and felt like he's a superbike rider now, no longer just a super sport rider, getting really comfortable with that machine. And, and he's done a really nice job this weekend, Greg. He's been in the top five quite a bit, has Escalante on his second year with this team. So, you know, it's nice to see him moving forward as Gagne gets it a little out of shape in between the left and the right. And you can see the two Yamaha boys right now at the front just starting to creep away from that battle for third. A little further back, you can see Hayden Gillum, Corey Alexander, and David Anthony in this battle, a little uh, probably about for eighth or ninth. But the two attack bikes are gone right now. So we'll see. Can Heron and them start to pull these guys back at all? Fresh and lean, progressive Yamahas. That's the Yamaha R1 leading the way. Of course, last time we were here at Barber Motorsports Park, Half a year ago, it was Cameron Peterson who won the last race of the season in the dry as his teammate Jake Gagne was trying to hold on to that number one plate. I saw Goltz jump into fourth, and it looked like Bobier behind him was coming through. But you can see off the start there, both these guys got great starts. Gagne was just in a little bit better position as they entered into turn one. But look at Heron. He rocketed by the outside of everybody. Escalante is going to take that position back. Aerial support provided by Lucas Oil Helicopter, and there's a pass, Jay. Cameron Bobier goes back by Escalante. So Cam got into Charlotte's Web a little bit deep, ran wide. Escalante snuck back up underneath him. On the number two, and there's Matthew Skultz right behind him. Now, Jay, I mentioned oh, at the top of the move. show, as Skultz goes trying to go up the inside. Skultz on that Westby Racing Yamaha R1 has won twice here on a superbike. But don't forget, he also won one of his superbike races on that stock thousand machine some years ago. And if he can get close enough, he'll square this up. Looks like he might try to go up underneath here, and he does. A nice move by Matthew Skultz to take over third spot from Heron. And there's Bobier on the number six. Titler's racing right behind him, Hannah. A factory bike coming right out of Ducati in Italy. And then, of course, you have the BMW M1000RR of Cameron Bobier as he sneaks up the inside of Charlotte's Web. The door's open, though, and there comes Heron who forces the issue, will Escalante go with him? But I think Cam's gonna have a run. This is the thing he did last with Escalante. Bobby is, tries to get up underneath and he's gonna make the pass stick. So even though he runs it in there a little wide, he runs the bike out, gets the bike squared up, gets it up off the edge of the tire, and is still able to outdrive guys on the exit of Charlotte's Web. Heron in that racecraft, Greg, he was able to hold the bike down. And now look at PJ Jacobson taking a shot at Escalante. He's gonna make that pass up underneath the Suzuki rider. Escalante squares that back up. The B BMW should be pretty strong down the straight. It'll be difficult for Escalante to do anything in turn one as it is. Here's a look at Escalante, yeah, the you, 54. You're going to see he goes up underneath him. When he gets off throttle as he lets off the gas here, the rear of the bike starts to come around on him, Greg. You can see it. The rear of the bike starts moving around. Was that they felt like they they feel like they've made a big jump. As we have another pass, it looks like it's going to be... P.J. Jacobson. Oh, and poor Heron has to check up on that one as P.J. really put the anchor out to slow down the 99 all the while Cameron Bobier just part of left part of your screen Heron's on they so have P different map options of course to play with the different tracks controls too PJ gets up underneath him and is really just trying to stop the bike from letting him run out too wide to not allow Heron to go back up got somebody behind him that is going to be able to go down the left side. Heron's using up all the racetrack like he should be using there to try to thwart that effort. You heard him say even in Atlanta, you know, he, he tried to move over to the right so somebody goes by him on the left and that's what he's trying to do here as Escalante takes a look here. Yeah. So Richie's, Richie's trying in one, like probably two or three different spots. Unfortunately, neither one of these two guys are close to the to the lead today but you got to bag these points you got to put them in as you can see Escalante is going to take a bigger step this time and he just can't make it work Heron just lets go of the lever and turns the bike in so the thing is it's a long season I know it's a battle for six but you got to get these points because I think come Road America some of the other tracks we're going to see those four five six rider freight trains at the front 3.8 seconds back from Skultz P.J. Jacobson up ahead of this battle between Heron Escalante. 
Ashton Yates in eighth, Corey Alexander in ninth, oh. David Anthony in 10th spot. Here comes a big move. Is this going to be the pass that finally sticks? Both motorcycles spinning the tire, but that Ducati is just Heron's so strong. Spot. But Heron's in a better spot there. Mm -hmm. But then he's got to, you got to remember at that point, he's narrower into the corner, and the tip in is so vital for, for Josh right now. So that's going to, again, it's going to be another kind of scary situation for him. He's going to be tighter, cutting off the radius a little, and uh, is going to make that bike move around even more. But he did a good job of handling it. And Escalante, so he's having to go the, the long way around to try to make these passes. Heron has got the advantage. White flag flies, final lap for Jake Gagne, a 124.6. So again, about two seconds slower than the fastest lap of the race for the number one plate. 1.6 seconds the gap to his teammate. Yeah, I was just going to say, I believe that was up over two seconds quite a while uh, for quite a while in this race. Cam Peterson's got that back down a little bit. As you can see, the battle on the right continuing to rage. Get a good look at Ganyu. We haven't seen him much. And there's his teammate not far behind. So the other two riders are tipping into turn two. It's a really good look at Gagne and him getting the bike turned and trying to get it up on the tire that's not as worn out. Battle for sixth on the right that we've been watching most of this race. Heron kept it over to the left that time as they went down to make it to where Escalante can't do anything. And this is where Richie had the bike turned up underneath him before. Of course, our aerial support provided by the Lucas Oil helicopter. It's what we're seeing on the right part of your screen as you watch. The riding beauty of Jake Gagne in the number one plate. What a race he's been able to manage. As Escalante on the right part of your screen getting closer to Heron again. Boy, Jay, when, when you can see a bike moving around, the Ducati moving around from the helicopter shot, yep. you can't even imagine what it feels Look like on run. board. Here comes a run but, from Escalante. But that's that racecraft. Heron keeps him to the outside as Gagne's coming out of the last corner. Here we go. Left part of your screen. Checker flag awaits. Jake Gagne takes another victory. His 33rd in the Medallia Superbike career. And here comes that battle for six. As Cam Peterson across the line in third. Matthew Skultz as well. Escalante, is he going to try it on the last lap? Oh, no, he doesn't get it done. And to the line they come. And what racecraft by Josh Aaron to take sixth place, probably one of the hardest sixth place <laughs> races question. in seventh between these two riders.